This is a very exciting day in the life of any gardener. It's the day when the first transplants are going to actually be planted in our garden beds. Now we are choosing our sugar snap peas because uh, peas, snap peas, uh, snow peas uh, can handle a little bit of coolness because we're not quite out of danger yet. But I know that uh, these sugar snap peas that we're planting today can take quite a chilly night if they need to. So the variety we're planting here is called Sugar Daddy. And I imagine that's gonna be a bigger uh, sugar snap pea uh, as opposed to like Sugar Baby. So uh, looking, these were planted on March 16th. Uh, and though they are, they are beautiful, they're strong, they are ready to go in. So, and here we're doing some of just that, you know, you got to clean up before you can start new, right? Oh, and look at all those little roly polies. They were quite happy under that rock. Well, they're just going to have to get happy in a slightly different location, but we're going to make sure they're just fine. Anyway, we're going to put on some compost here, uh, reset the irrigation a little bit. I do use drip irrigation. If you're interested in learning more about that, please just put it in the comments below and uh, maybe we'll do a video or ask answer questions about that. So anyway, here's uh, this is composted manure that uh, I get at one of our local big box stores. Uh, it's a very, I've been using, it's called Glacial Bay is the brand. Been using it for several years and I'm very pleased with it. Now I choose to plant sugar snap peas and snow peas because I really don't like to have to pod peas because that's just a lot of work for a product that's pretty uh, available uh, even as an organic. So here we're going to be putting in sugar snap starts, uh, that, uh, but I said again, we started in March, and on the other side of these hoops, we'll be planting on uh, probably this coming week, uh, sh snow peas uh, from seed, so that we'll get a little stag or two in uh, harvest. Now tell me in the comments below what kind of peas you prefer to grow, what you've had success with, what you might recommend to others, and let me know where you're from so that maybe people from that same area might be interested in trying that variety. I just love the look of fresh compost on top of a bed. Uh, it just, it shows promise, doesn't it? It just says the hope of what can come from just this pretty mm. dirt uh, and a little little bit of care and happily those peas will be off in just a minute so we're just kind of getting the uh, irrigation reset from last year it's amazing how uh, squirrels and birds and just about anything else that climbs up there can get involved with that irrigation so it's not working yet but I'd like it to be um, in the proper place before we plant Everything is buttoned up here now. Uh, we've got some of the garden staples holding down the irrigation, and it's time to get planting. So uh, using one of my favorite tools at all in the garden is the Hori Hori knife. We're just making small uh, holes for the that will take the roots of the peas. We plant them about the same depth that they were planted in their cells, put a little small handful of, it's a organic fertilizer called Biotone. It is made by a company called Espoma, and it is a general, you know, it's a fairly all-purpose organic fertilizer that also has a mycorrhizal fungi in it. So it saves a step of also adding the fungi, which if you've watched me uh, for any time at all, you know that I'm a huge fan. So it's pretty much the same here. 
for each one of these pea sets. And we're setting these, uh, these were planted two peas to a cell. Peas do not mind being a little cozy while they're growing. Uh, and once they get just a little bit bigger, they will catch that bottom rail and they will just scurry right up. These, these are uh, cattle panels that I have hooped over the top of my two quite large, tall raised beds uh, in the back of our property. And it's wonderful for trellising just about everything. So we're starting here with peas, but the minute they're done, uh, there'll be melons, there'll be beans, there will be some beautiful flowering vines uh, that crawl up these for the summer. It's always good to find ways to grow vertically uh, in spaces that, quite frankly, would not be used otherwise. Uh, so it gives you a little more gardening space than what you might have just doing everything horizontally. Peas do not like to grow near anything in the allium family. So onions, garlic, shallots, chives. It's not the best companion plant you could put near them. They do like to grow with carrots, uh, cucumbers, any of the nightshade family, eggplant, peppers, uh, tomatoes. They're very happy to uh, live next to. I wonder if that's why peas and carrots became kind of a thing, because they grow well together. I don't know. Anyway, they do prefer that uh, to many of the other things. So the process is really the same here. Put down some compost, uh, make, a, make a nice slit in the dirt for the uh, roots of the pea to go in. Fill it in with some all-purpose uh, long-term, you know, it's a slow-release fertilizer uh, that has mycorrhizal, again, that was biotone. And then we plant them in. We're going to water them in. And as the day was getting much windier, uh, we end up putting a string around the uh, peas to keep them close uh, to the trellis so that they aren't just battered around in the spring winds. Two of these cattle panel hoops and we are also planting the same sugar snap peas kind of kitty corner to the other ones now if you like these videos and you want to follow along this season and see how our sugar snaps and everything else gets along
please hit subscribe. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here's to a great garden year for all of us. This is Audrey from Real Food Comes Dirty. See you next time.